Welcome back everyone. For this episode I thought I'd take a little break from talking about stamps and talk a little bit about myself. Let you know who I am, where I've been, where I'm going. I started this channel about two year, almost two years ago now and uh, that was because I couldn't find hardly any philatelic information on YouTube. I had been listening to the podcast Stamp Show here today, which is brought to you by the people at the uh, uh, PSE, Professional Stamp Experts, and I was wondering if they had a YouTube channel. So I searched YouTube and I did find that they had a channel, except it only consisted of the audio of the podcast. There was no video. I searched around a little more and it seemed the only philatelic content consisted of people, collectors who were just flipping through their album pages and each each page saying what rare and valuable stamps they had when it was obvious it was just common ordinary you know minimal value stuff and not even any information besides that this is a real valuable stamp this is a you know rare stamp there were there were a couple of channels the APS American Philatelic Society there's the going postal channel put out by the Cardinal Spellman uh, philatelic library other than that there was nothing to be found until one day I came across a channel that changed my life and I bet you can figure out who that is. Of course, that would be Graham Beck's Exploring Stamps. It immediately caught my attention. You know, I was impressed by his professionalism, the quality of the video work, and the information that he put forth. I saw that he had 10,000 subscribers, and I knew there was a lot more people than just myself looking for philatelic content on YouTube. And although I'm no expert myself in any particular area, I have been collecting a long time. I have, you know, a broad knowledge of, you know, quite a few areas of stamp collecting. So I thought, well, I'll just share what I know about stamps. And I started my channel. Now my collecting experience goes back to 1974. I was 19... 19 years old at the time I was in the Air Force and I had enlisted in 1973 and gone through basic training and tech school and in January of 1974 I had graduated from tech school and had gone on to my first real assignment which was in Mill Valley uh, Air Force Station California across the bay from San Francisco and the reason it's called station and not base is because there were no aircraft there. This was just a radar station. This was a very small radar station on top of Mount Tamalpais. It had maybe 200 people altogether working there. And uh, one day I was down in the NCO club, which is the local social gathering place <laughs> where you could, uh, you know, the bar, of course, watch TV, shoot pool play the jukebox and that day I happened to be talking to Staff Sergeant Pat Shepard who was not a co-worker but he worked in the in the uh, office next to mine and somehow during the course of our conversation he mentioned that he was a stamp collector and I said oh really he said I'd, I'd be interested in seeing them sometime and next thing I knew we we're going up to his barracks room and he pulls out a Scott International album, opens it up. The first page I see is this. Well, not this one per se, but one that looked very much like this. And it was the uh, Australian Kangaroos, the first issue. Now, let me go back a little bit first and explain that when I grew up, I was aware of stamps, of course. Everyone wrote letters, but the only stamps I, I was aware of were the, the Lincolns and the Washingtons and maybe the uh, German stamps that came on the letters from my, uh, my mother's family. But other than that, I, I wasn't aware of stamps. I didn't know of stamps that were issued before these and these were definitives and I, I never even knew about commemorative stamps. 
and when I saw this page of ruse, they blew my mind. In fact, these kangaroos enthralled me so much that I can't even remember what other stamps I saw that day. I have no, no recollection at all. These, but the image of that page of kangaroos is permanently etched in my mind. So the next day, or thereabouts anyways, I looked up stamp dealers near me and I found a shop in the neighboring town of San Rafael. And that's where I discovered a whole new world of stamps, including United States commemoratives, which I had, like I said, never seen before. And there was one that was particularly fascinating to me. The U.S. Bicentennial was coming up in 1976, but the Postal Service had already been issuing stamps leading up to that uh, date. And the previous year, 1973, they had issued a stamp honoring or commemorating the Boston Tea Party. It looks like this. I found this just super interesting because it was four stamps with one continuous design across the four stamps. From here, I was hooked. I took out a subscription to Lynn Stamp News. I bought a uh, Scott US album, and eventually I got a set of Scott catalogs. Receiving the Lynn Stamp News in the mail each week was the highlight of my week, and I just devoured everything I could read. I had read about these fairly new stamp issuing entities called the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man, and their designs struck my eye. They're colorful, interesting designs, and I bought a White Ace album to hold these stamps. For those not familiar with White Ace, these were a high-end album with high-quality paper, uh, with colorful borders on the pages and uh, stamp captions on the boxes. And I was on my way as a stamp collector. After a brief interruption in my collecting activities due to being uh, sent to a remote radar station in Alaska, I resumed my activities in my next uh, assignment in Port Austin, Michigan, there at the tip of the thumb. In my shop, I found a co-worker who was also a stamp collector, Kenny Jones, and we made frequent trips to the Tri-Cities area, Saginaw, Midland, Bay City. Uh, we would just scour all the, uh, all the stamp shops we could find in one day. However, this is when tragedy struck my, my stamp collecting life. I got a girlfriend. This girlfriend? collected comics. Now, I had been a comic book reader all my life. I was I was a DC kid. I, I loved Superman, the Green Lantern, the Legion of Superheroes. My girlfriend collected X-Men. That's when uh, the new X-Men, X-Men number 94, uh, had come out recently. And this rekindled <laughs> my interest in comics and my stamps suffered for it. I spent the last year and a half of my Air Force career at Port Austin, and when I got out, when I got discharged, I sold off my stamps, and I went home to California and began my new life as a civilian. Comic books were in a boom period in the 80s, just as stamps had been in a boom during the 70s. And I started doing a mail order business in comics and going to swap meets and uh, comic conventions and setting up a dealer table, selling books. I did great and it was a lot of fun. In early 1988, I got laid off once too many times <laughs> and I headed out to Texas where my sister and her family lived. And once I got settled in out there, I rented a booth at a local antique mall and I was selling comics and another new, uh, another newfound hobby, baseball cards. I managed to last a year, about a year at the antique mall. And then I got the call from the company that would become my employer. 
I had been waiting some four or five months since I had turned in an application and I got a job at my brother-in-law's employer, General Dynamics. And this was a good news, bad news situation. The bad news was that this was where I was to meet my future wife. The good news being that she turned out to be a stamp lover too. And we enjoyed collecting U.S. stamps together. The bad news, on the other hand, after that, <laughs> was that even our mutual passion for stamps was not enough to hold our marital union together. And when we split up, I lost custody of the stamps. And once again, I had gone from philatelist to philatelist. I'm sorry, am I boring you? I'll try to wrap this up quickly. While I was no longer actively collecting, I did keep up with the hobby. I maintained a subscription to Lynn Stamp News. I had also had a subscription to Global Stamp News. And it was about 15 years ago, 2006, I believe, when I came across an ad for a new stamp site called Stamp Wants. And they were going to have a drawing to give away an inverted Jenny, a United States C3A. So I hopped on the computer and I checked out Stamp Wants and, well, it re-rekindled my interest in stamps and I started buying again. Back when I was in Port Austin, Michigan, I had entertained thoughts of uh, becoming a dealer. That's, I wanted to buy and sell stamps. I had once found an ad in the Lynn Stamp News from a company that would help you become a dealer. You know, and they even printed up uh, letterhead stationery for you and had uh, wholesale stamp deals that they offered. But nothing ever came of that. I did order some stationery, but nothing ever came of it. A poor airman in the Air Force couldn't afford even a, <laughs> a modest uh, inventory, at even at wholesale prices. But after a couple of years of... of uh, buying on stamp wants. I found myself with a lot of duplicates and as time went by I found I bought a lot of stamps that I really didn't have the interest in that I did at the time that I bought them. And I found myself collecting more and more duplicates and unwanted material and in 2008 I opened up a shop on uh, on Stamp Wants, which would later change its name to Bid Start. And after a brief debacle where Stanley Gibbons bought Bid Start and just drove the site into the ground, that, that site dissolved and the original Bid Start Stamp Wants owner started up Hip Stamp. And that's where I am now. I have a I have a shop on hip stamp and unfortunately due to restrictions by the Universal Postal Union and the United States Postal Service I'm unable to sell to uh, international customers because the the uh, postage cost is just prohibitive for sending one even just one little stamp you cannot send it by normal letter mail. It has to be a retail package and the minimum cost for that is $15. So I'm limited to just selling to uh, domestic addresses. As for my personal collecting interests, um, my main countries that I collect, I'm a worldwide collector ostensibly um, and of the classic period up to 1940, but that is just a very loose guideline for me. I collect everything from the beginning on up to the current. Uh, my main countries are uh, Germany, Poland, Lithuania, and Ukraine. Algeria is a big country for me, and Switzerland, and also China, as my wife is Chinese and that got me interested into collecting China. 
I have various topical collections that I collect, starting with uh, classical music on stamps, uh, literature, American literature, and uh, world literature. And because as a kid I had to take accordion lessons, well, I didn't have to, I wanted to. So one of my topics is accordions on stamps. And I also collect the unusual stamps or novelty stamps, like many of the stamps issued by Austria uh, these days. Uh, the COVID mask, the, <laughs> the toilet paper stamp, all those novelty stamps. I also have smaller topics in uh, bats. I don't really actively collect those now, I, just as I happen to come across them. And then my first car that I owned was a 1968 Volkswagen Beetle. So I collect VW Beetles on stamps. And because they, re, you know, Volkswagen Beetles are, remind everyone of the Ladybug Beetles, I also collect the Ladybugs on stamps. And then, of course, you've seen my previous video on Czesław Swania, the legendary engraver of postage stamps. I have a album just of Czesław Swania pages, which I bought from another collector who compiled it. And here's what that looks like. All the stamps are arranged by country, starting with Oland Islands, and Australia, Belgium, and so forth, in alphabetical order. And right now, I've I just recently started putting all my Swanya stamps in the album. I just recently stocked up on stamp mounts and was able to get busy mounting them in the album. Still got a million of them to go. There's Sweden. Anyways, a, a nice album comes in a PDF form. You print out the pages yourself. Unfortunately, the last time I checked, this dealer or that collector is not selling the, the album on hip stamp anymore and I don't really recall his name um, if you're interested in the Swanya album drop me a line at tedtalkstamps gmail.com and I'll if I can find the information for you I'll pass it on so that in a nutshell is Ted the talking stamp collector I have a lot of plans for the for this channel I have a lot of subjects I still want to cover and if there's anything in particular uh, you would like to know about, or, or if you'd like to see an episode cover a particular subject, again, drop me a line. I'll see what I can do about creating a program for you. I'm also planning on starting a, a philately course from A to Z that will take the beginner from the very basics on through the uh, essential items that you need to know about. This course will go over multiple episodes, over many episodes hopefully, and I hope to cover a lot of territory in it. And I've started writing that, and I plan on getting that going next year. So that about wraps up this episode. Thanks for sticking around this long with me. <laughs> My wife and I went down and visited Big Bend National Park last week, and she's anxious for me to uh, get all our video clips together into one video. So I got to get going on that. So until next time, this is Ted the Talking Stamp Collector wishing you all happy stamping. <laughs>